الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولاهما بعد. Today's characteristic that we want to discuss is one that is relatively easy and yet it is rarely done. And it is a topic of great importance for societies and for families especially. And that is the topic of, in Arabic we call it, إِصْلَاحُ ذَاتِ الْبَيْنِ Or helping to heal the broken ties between people who have no longer friendships or relationships. In other words, this is a very noble khuluq, it's a very important one. In our relationships, in our families, in our circle of friends, there are always certain problems that happen between two people. Fights happen, family disputes happen, right? Issues happen between cousins, between brothers and sisters, between family, between friends. The Sharia encourages us who are bystanders to not just be bystanders. The Sharia wants us to be actively involved in trying to bring those people back together. Don't just sit back and say, oh, my cousin's not talking to my cousin. My uncle and nephew are no longer talking. My two siblings are fighting each other. What can I do? No, the Sharia encourages you. It is one of the akhlaq of the mu'min to get involved in family and friends, to try to help those broken friendships, broken bonds. Every one of us has family friends. They might be going through marital disputes, husband, wife fighting, your wife's friends with his wife, your friends with him. Don't just be on the sideline. See if you can help and bring those two together again. And Allah Azza wa Jal praises, and the Prophet has praised Islah that al Bain. By the way, the Arabic Islah that al Bain. So Bain is the distance between you. Islah, uh, or sorry, that is the bonds. And Islah, you're mending the bonds between you. That's what it means. You're mending the bonds between you. Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran that. Uh, uh, Allah says in the Quran, the Arabic is وَإِن طَائِفَتَانِ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ قَتَتَلُوا فَأَصْلِحُوا بَيْنَهُمَا If two groups of believers are fighting, don't just sit there. Get involved and أَصْلِحُوا بَيْنَهُمَا Bring about reconciliation between them. This applies to two nations. It applies to two tribes. It applies to two warring families. It applies to two relatives. It applies to two friends. It applies to husband and wife. If two groups of people are having an issue, don't just sit back and do nothing. Aslihu baynahuma. Get involved and merge them back. Bring a sulah. Bring a reconciliation between them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us in the Quran about using his name in qasam for something that is bad. So Allah says, Wala taj'alu Allaha urdata li aymanikum. And what is it? And tabarru wa tattaqu wa tuslihu baynan nas. Don't use the name of Allah and say you're not going to do something good or give charity or bring reconciliation. What is the point here? So you know some people when they get angry, they say, Wallahi, I'm not gonna you know, do something good. I'm not gonna give charity to this person. Allah is saying, don't choose my name in these types of things. Don't bring in my name and say, Wallahi, I'm gonna do something bad. I'm gonna do something evil. And Wallahi, I'm not gonna bring these two people back together again. Meaning, Allah is saying this is a good thing. Don't choose my name for a bad thing. So Allah Azza wa Jalla says in the Quran, لا خير في كثير من نجواهم إلا من أمر بصدقة أو معروف أو إصلاح بين الناس. Another tactic of the Quran: secret gatherings is usually bad. Allah is saying, when you have a secret gathering, don't tell anybody. We're coming together at this time. Secret gatherings, Allah says, لا خير في كثير. Most such secret gatherings, there's no good in them. Then Allah says, three times you have secret gatherings, they are good. Number one. Commanding good. Number two, giving charity. You have the secret way to give charity to somebody without telling them. And number three, islah that al bain, bringing reconciliation. What does this mean? So you have two cousins that are not speaking to one another. Some family dispute, some inheritance issue, some fight happened. The family should have a secret gathering. Don't tell those two cousins. The rest of the family come together. Oh, we're not going to tell anybody because we're doing something good. Allah encourages secrecy. Allah encourages a positive plotting and planning. How can we bring them back together again? What can we say that will bring about? Arrange a picnic, do something, and everybody should be in on a halal plot, right? Somehow we bring them back together again. Allah is saying, have a najwa, have a secret gathering to bring people back together again. This is what the Sharia wants us to do. We, we should try to get people back together again. And and our Prophet ﷺ said, 
Hadith of Abu Dawood. Do you want me to tell you a deed, listen to this, that is better than sadaqah and salah and siyam? It's Hadith authentic Abu Dawood. Do you want me to tell you a deed that is better than fasting and praying and giving charity? They said, what is better than that? He said, islahu dhatil bayn. Bringing two people back together again. That is better in the eyes of Allah than sadaqah and salah and, char- and, and siyam that is nafil, that is sunnah. Bringing two people back together again. Subhanallah, this is a deed that is rarely talked about because we are taught to be selfish, mind your own business. No, the sharia says we mind the business of those we love. If we truly love them, we care about them, we will get involved. We'll try to bring about and make bonds between them. And our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the famous incident, he was giving the khutbah his grandson Hassan radiallahu an, came in and he tripped and he started crying he broke the khutbah he came down picked his grandson came up hadith is in Bukhari by the way and then he pointed to his grandson al Hassan radiallahu an, and he was a baby at the time and he said this grandson of mine shall be a leader one day because he will bring reconciliation between two large groups of Muslims and that happened in the time of Muawiyah radiallahu anhu. That sort of happened with Hassan radiallahu anhu. Why did he become a leader? Why do we admire and respect him more than the other party in this particular case? Why? Because he gave up what was more rightfully his. He gave it up because he wanted sulh between people. So the Prophet said, this is the real leader. This is the real leader because he brought the people back together again. This is how he praised those that are bringing people back together again. And in fact, in the seerah, there's a very interesting you know, quiz question. So you can ask it if you're not watching the video or you haven't heard me, you can ask somebody else. Who did the Prophet pray behind ever in salah? This is a quiz question, right? Which sahaba led the salah and the Prophet prayed behind him? There's only two, okay? Number one, we all know. Who's number two? Abd al-Rahman ibn Awf. Abd al-Rahman ibn Awf is the second. We don't have time to go into the, the second story. Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, when did it happen? The first time ever in Islamic history that somebody was in the maqam of the Prophet and the Prophet was behind. When did that happen? It happened when there was a dispute amongst the tribes of Quba. So because, you know, when the Prophet was in Medina, nobody would lead Salah and he's in Medina. The whole 13 years, yeah, in, uh, 10 years, nobody leads Salah and he is in Medina. Only when he's away from Medina, then somebody leads the Salah until his final days, uh, uh, وسلم, then Abu Bakr led in that time frame. Otherwise, in the masjid of the Prophet nobody would dare stand and the Prophet is in the city. One time, only once it happened before he fell sick towards the end of his life. And that was when the two tribes of Quba had a dispute and they had a physical fight and they pulled out their swords and they threw stones. There was blood between the two. So the Prophet announced, I'm going to Quba to bring sulah between these two tribes. He left after Fajr and time for Dhuhr came and he wasn't there. They waited, they waited, they waited. Delayed Dhuhr hours until they said, okay, we're going to have to pray. Looking around, who's going to lead? Abu Bakr, you lead. They knew Abu Bakr who he was, the number one of the Sahaba. So Abu Bakr al-Siddiq stood to lead and at that point in time when he was in the second rak'ah, the Prophet returned and he was in the second rak'ah. When he stood in the back, Subhanallah, nobody's going to remain silent. They began saying, Subhanallah, Subhanallah. The whole crowd began chanting, Subhanallah, Subhanallah. Abu Bakr al-Siddiq would never turn around. When the whole masjid is chanting, he literally looked back and he saw the Prophet standing there. And the Prophet said to him, mechanic, stay where you are, right? And Abu Bakr al-Siddiq went like this and stepped back. He went like this, like thanking Allah, and he stepped back. When he stepped back, it's an empty space. So the Prophet then walked up. And then after the salah, he said, Abu Bakr, why didn't you continue? He said, it is not befitting that the son of Abu Qahafa leads the Prophet Muhammad in salah. Right? So for a millisecond, he was behind him. And then he walked up and he led. That's a beautiful story. What is the moral of the story? Ten years, the only time the salah was delayed. Why? Sulah between people. Bringing people back together again. That's how important it is. The Prophet knew he has to pray Dhuhr, but that is also very important. And he delayed Salat al Dhuhr in order to bring reconciliation between two tribes. And our Prophet actively got involved in bringing about reconciliation. Multiple incidents of the seerah where you know people are having a dispute or some issue, and the Prophet makes shafa'a and he brings them back together again. In fact, even his own you know daughter and son-in-law, Fatima and Ali radiallahu anhum, hadith also in Zul Bukhari that he visited 
visited Fatima and he said, where is you know, Ali? Fatima said angrily, we had a fight, he left, I don't know where he is. Khalas, yani. Happens, this is life, this is the reality, no matter who you are, husband, wife, husband, wife, mashallah, tabarakallah, it happens, right? So Ali radiallahu an was not there for a day. He went finding, where is Ali? He found him sleeping in the masjid. Sleeping in the masjid because yani, what are you going to do? You have to you know, go somewhere you want to the masjid, okay? So he's sleeping in the masjid and the Prophet ﷺ lifted it with his own hand and he said, stand up, O Abu Turab, because it was all dusty. And he dusted with his own hand and he laughed and joked with him and he brought him back to Fatima's house and he reconciled between them. Subhanallah, this is what you do. You don't exacerbate, how dare you do something to my daughter? No, it's you bring the family back together again. This is what you do. As bystanders, you don't just remain neutral. Our Sharia says, get involved. In fact, an incident as well, and again, all of this requires explanation, Allah Musta'an, time is limited. The incident of Barira and Mughith, which is funny and sad and tragic, and it is what it is, alhamdulillah. You know, husband and wife couple, and for whatever reason, now she is able to walk out of the marriage, right? Long story, you can look up the books of fiqh. So she decided to break the marriage. She doesn't want to get away from the, the husband, and she has the right in this case to do that. And her husband, Mughith, began crying in public, Begging, Barira, give me another chance. I beg you, you know, we're in together again. And he's following her, begging and crying, and she's saying, I don't want to get back, I want to get back. The Prophet himself, and these were, by the way, two slaves at the time. So it doesn't matter who you are, you bring people back together. He got involved, and he said, Barira, you know, bichara, poor guy, I mean, you know, just take him back, you know, like that. So Barira said, Ya Rasulallah, are you commanding me, or are you just, yani, trying your best, you know, to bring, is this a haq? Allah's hukum, or are you just, you know, helping and I have the right to say yes or no? Look at her iman, by the way. Look at her iman. Because if it was Allah's command, khalas. But if it's just you're trying and whatnot, so the Prophet said, no, this is not a command. I'm just sulah. I'm just trying. And so, you know, she says, with the scorn, only a woman who has been scorned can muster, that flick of the wrist, la hajat li fi. I have no need for him. And so the marriage does not go forward. Point being, the Prophet himself gets involved. And he's trying. That's all. I mean, in the end of the day, you cannot force, right? You try to bring people back together again. This is what our sharia requires. So one of the akhlaq of the mu'min, easy yet difficult. It's easy because all you do is you talk to people and you bring a thing. And final point here, subhanAllah. We said this, was it two weeks ago or something? One of the reasons or one of the uh, causes where we're allowed to speak an untruth, one of the causes where we're allowed to say something that's not true is to bring people back together again. Our Prophet said, Laysa bil kadib, it's not considered kadib. It's not a lie when you say something for sulh between people. What does this mean? So you go to one cousin, you say, you know, I was with the other cousin and we reminisced of the good old days, we remembered an incident and you know, he expressed regret that something happened. He, whatever, you know the story, you bring it in. You are allowed to speak factually untrue. And then you go to the other cousin, you say, you know what, I was with him and he also expressed regret and whatnot. So the both of them, you soften their hearts, right? You prepare the way. This is what the najwa, the secret gathering is for. This is what you bring people together and you hatch a halal plot to bring two brothers, to bring two cousins, to bring husband and wife back together again. And you are allowed to say things that obviously use your wisdom here. I mean, you don't want to say something you're going to get caught or something. But you're allowed to say generic things that will help you to bring people back together again. One of our scholars said, Allah Azza wa Jal allows an untrue statement to bring ties back. And Allah hates a true statement that breaks ties up. Think about it. Allah allows an untrue statement to bring two people back. And Allah hates a true statement like Namima, right? Like saying something about somebody behind their back. Then you go and tell the person. Even if it's true, somebody said it. Why did you go and say to the person? Just don't say it. Leave the ties there. So of the akhlaq of the mu'min, we are actively engaged and involved in our circle of family and friends. And we want to bring about sulh and reconciliations. And Allah Azza wa Jal praises it. And our Prophet said, it is better than praying and fasting. And Allah says in the Quran with this, we conclude, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ What? Ikhwa. What's after that? فَأَصْلِحُوا بَيْنَ أَخَوَيْكُمْ This is in the Quran. The mu'mins, they're one family. So bring about sulh between all of your family. That's what Allah wants us to do. May Allah make us all instruments of peace and sulh amongst our family and friends. Zakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.
إِنَّ الْمُسْلِمِينَ وَالْمُسْلِمَاتِ وَالْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ وَالْقَانِتِينَ وَالْقَانِتَاتِ وَالصَّادِقِينَ وَالصَّادِقَاتِ وَالصَّابِرِينَ وَالصَّابِرَاتِ وَالْخَاشِعِينَ وَالْخَاشِعَاتِ والخاشعين والخاشعات والمتصدقين والمتصدقات والصائمين والصائمات والحافظين فروجهم والحافظات والذاكرين الله كثيرا والذاكرات أعد الله لهم مغفرة وأجرا عظيما